in Uniswap B3 when you do a trade, how does Uniswap find the next position? The way it finds the next position is by recording the positions tick lower and tick upper in a mapping called tick bitmap. A tick bitmap is a mapping from int 16 to uint 256. The keys of this mapping will be int 16 ranging from minus 2 to the 15 to 2 to the 15 minus 1. The values for this mapping is a uint 256. But the way to think about it here is that you should think about this as a bit of zeros and ones, 256 bits. Okay, so this is a tick bit map. The next thing that you need to understand is called a position. A position basically is an int 24 that splits into int 16 and uint 256. For example, let's say that we have a tick. A tick is represented by int 24. For example, let's say that this tick is equal to minus 200,697. We can represent this as a sequence of zeros and ones. The first 16 bits counting from the left is called a word position, and this is represented as int 16. The last 8 bits is named as bit position. So this is a position, int 24, take, splits into two parts, int 16 and uint 8. How does Uniswap v3 store a tick into a tick bitmap? We will use the tick from the previous example, and here we have the tick. The first 16 bits is a int 16, and this is a word position, and the last 8 bit is stored as uint 8, and this is the bit position. When you just evaluate the first 16 bits as int 16, this turns out to be minus 784. If you evaluate the last 8 bits as uint 8, this turns out to be 7. Next, using this minus 784 as the key, we access the tick bitmap of int 16 access the tick bitmap at minus 784. And let's say that the value of uint 256 that is stored at this position, minus 784, is some kind of uint 256 with zeros and ones. To store the last 8 bits of the tick, this is equal to 7, so we set a 1 at the 7th index. This will turn a 0 at the 7th index of a 256 bits to 1. This is how Uniswap v3 stores a tick in a tick bitmap. Split the tick into two parts, and the last 8 bits is stored into 256 bits. And here's how to recover a tick from a tick bitmap. On the left, we have the keys for the tick bitmap. And let's say that we access the key minus 784. And at this key, let's say that the value is this sequence of 256 bits of zeros and ones. To get the tick, we fill the first 16 bits with minus 784. Now tick is int 24. We filled up 16 bits, so we still have 8 more bits to fill up. Let's say that we wanted to get the tick at this 7th index. Then what we do is we first write 7 as uint 8, a sequence of zeros and ones of length 8. And then we fill up the last 8 bits. And this is how we recover a tick from a tick bitmap. Access the key, fill up the first 16 bits, access the index, and then fill up the last 8 bits. Let's say that we wanted to flip a tick. If the uint value of the tick bitmap at some index is a 1, then we flip it to 0, and if it is a 0, we flip it to 1. How do we do this? Well, let's start with the tick again, and then we'll split the tick into two parts, the word position and the bit position. The word position will give us the key to the tick bitmap, and the bit position will tell us which index in the 256 bits to flip. To flip a bit of a 256 bits of zeros and ones, we first create a mask. The mask will be a sequence of all zeros, except the one at the 7th index. And then we will do an XOR with the mask on the current value stored at minus 784. Let's say that the current value is a 0. When we do an XOR, this will change this value to a 1. On the other hand, if this value was a 1, and then when we do an XOR using the mask, this will turn the 1 into a 0. So this is how a tick is flipped. So in this video, I explained how to flip a tick, how to get the tick from the tick bitmap, and how the tick is stored in a tick bitmap. In the next video, I'll explain how to use this tick bitmap to get the next tick when we're doing the swap.